I'm just gonna hold off of my <laughs> hold my whole headset off. <laughs> uh anyways, welcome back to Quick Sixer. It's your boys, Pat Ars and Knitch with us today. It's a very, very special guest, Joe Bellavender of Jean Baptiste Brewing out of Michigan, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Or, or Michigan. All right, and uh, so, Joe, you are our first home brewer ever on the show, just so you know. So, a little round cool. of applause. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, we, I was telling you earlier a little bit that we've had, like, some really big breweries before on here, and but we never, like, we never had any home brewers or anybody, like, interested after we like, reached out or anything to come on, so really appreciate you taking some time to talk about your beverages and I, I don't know so i before we do any like intro type or well, any more intro stuff i want to show off this i like i really like this like I, it's not a full wrap uh like label i oh, really cool. dig it yeah i want to do something different yeah it's cool man i so did you you did this all this art too yeah yeah i did all our oh nice that's so, rad. so i don't know if you can see the logo on there but anyways uh do you want uh, i'll crack this open and then this is the brit golden the folding the house of cards 4.538 ibu if you do you want to you want to talk about how um i don't know i'm kind of curious how you came up with the name for your brew and then maybe talk about this a little bit this particular one how i made it no, no, no. Like, oh, yeah, well, I, I guess like if yeah, maybe um, I don't know. I'm, cu- I'm more more curious about the name of the like what how you decided on Jean Baptiste. Um, my mom's side of the family um, is from Lake Charles, Louisiana, so I have a lot of Cajun relative. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. The Baptiste is kind of like um almost in a lot of. In the past, a lot of French surnames, so that was kind of like your middle name almost. That okay. was kind of an expanding thing; like anybody could do that name. And the story mm-hmm. of John Baptiste is pretty cool. Himself, I'm not a really religious person, but I just thought it was. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it definitely makes cool. a good name for a beer for a brewing company for sure. Yeah, and this this is really good. And it has a great color. I don't know if you can see. You can probably see. Yeah. Look at that color. Incredible. Um it also doesn't have a lot of head to it. So yeah, oh yeah. Um, so <clears throat> about this Brick Golden one. Uh we have two beers that we're gonna try on this on the show today, but particularly this one. Like, is there any um anything you want to say about it or talk about like uh what you use brewing it or any of that well, kind of stuff? Well, it's essentially like a, a British style of almost their American light lager. Mm. It's, like, it's like an ESB, but just very light, um, very light um, malts, um, about the same bitterness as an ESB. But mm-hmm. it actually, kind of, it's kind of evolved into more of an American hop style. So there's like centennial hops in there. And okay. American bread hops and citrus flavors in there. So. Yeah, yeah. That's I can definitely that's get that's the good. get your citrusy, de- on, especially on the on the back end. So, I mean, it's like, and it's and then smells pretty citrusy a little bit too. Mm. Some uh, sapphire hops in there. This is actually a recipe that was given to me from a brewery in Ferndale, Michigan, by a brewer Zach that kind of has history in my club. That's how he kind of got started his home brewing into his brewery. Is he won a uh, competition at our club's uh, competition site? Oh, cool. Well, shout out Zach. What's uh, what's this club? Um, his brewery is uh, Herb Rest. My club is Pontiac Brewing Tribe. Okay, that's cool. And then you, how did you get involved with them? Uh, my club, or well, yeah, I guess with yeah, with your club. Um, I kind of found them online. Like when I first started brewing, I got a Mister Beer Kit in a, in a as a Christmas gift. Yeah. And it was absolutely horrible. It was the worst beer I ever brewed in my life. <laughs> That's what I've heard about it. And I just, yeah. I kind of just thought that like you went from 
off the street. You got a job sweeping some Florida brewery, and that's how you became a brewer. I didn't realize there was a bunch of home brewers and people were doing it like in their house. I just yeah, I couldn't even fathom it. And I came to find out find that there were like so millions of brewers like across the country. So. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, <clears throat> so is so how long ago was that when you got your your beer kit? Uh, it's going on almost thirteen years now. I've been brewing. Yeah. Shit. In those 13 years, I mean, I I took a few screen screen grabs from um your Instagram and from oh well, there's nothing on threats, but you've won quite a few quite a quite a few uh well, I guess just medals and awards, trophies, all sorts of stuff for brewing. That I mean that was kind of initially what I what caught my eye when I was when I found you. Besides, you have a cool logo and good beers, but I was like, man, this dude's just winning shit. Like this, this dude's out here, you know, trying to get that that paper. So, like, what, what, um, I don't know, what, what would be like, the like, if you were gonna shoot for some award or um, some medal, like, what, what is the thing? Maybe is it in your region or is it nationally that you would be shooting for? Like, I think right now. Know. Right now, I'm kind of building up some competitions because I'm part of a thing. It's called the Master Homebrew Program. Okay. So it's a conglomeration of a bunch of people who compete around the country that are pretty okay. good. So we earn points, and I'm trying to do that right now. Um, oh, cool. And then in the next month or two, I'll start gearing up for National Homebrew Competition. Nice. Where And where's that at? Um, They change it. Uh, trying to travels travels uh, travels across the country. This year yeah. was in San Diego. Uh, the year before was in Pittsburgh. They have like a whole convention. They have the award itself, ceremony itself. Oh, cool, cool, cool. The convention. Um, and I saw recently. Well, maybe it's not too recently, but took a gold at the Michigan State Fair for the your cream ale, the yeah. cream get on top. Yeah. yeah. What uh? So what do you besides? I mean, this one's super good, but what do you think is your favorite kind of beer to brew? Um, that's kind of kind of like the German lagers. Um, I like a lot of Brits, ESBs, Kolsch's. Kolsch is probably my favorite brew. Okay. Beer to brew, just because it's so complex, but it's so simple at the same time. Yeah. It's like a fine line, you can mess it up, or it can okay. be really good. Okay. Um, do you think, do you think anything that you've had, like you had before you started brewing, like influence what you wanted to brew at first? Or do you think it was like, you you know, you started at a a certain starting point when you started home brewing and then just like kind of grew out your knowledge and like tested out things from there? I kind of grew out. The first craft beer I I remember having was uh, a blue moon. Mm Mm-hmm. Which it was sort of craft at that time. Yeah. And then yeah. Dragon Gate is a brewery that was that opened up near my house where I grew up like less than a mile away. And it was my first uh real microbrew. Okay. And then I had um Belgian beer, it's called St. Bernardus Five, and that kind of just opened the floodgates and I got Belgian beer super heavy. Oh nice. So nice. That's yeah. kind of I like to brew the most, but yeah um yeah that's i mean that's pretty interesting i think i was actually um you met you met drew for a second last week and we were talking a few episodes ago about something pretty similar and it was like um what what beer or whatever got got him drinking different kinds of beers and i think it was there was blue moons and uh fat tires at the time that he was like the first thing that he drank that was not like some like super company you know yeah like to... yeah. <laughs> yeah, some <laughs> butters and miller or whatever adam what do you think you, was your your first beer i mean those were de- branched out those are definitely in rotation for sure mm-hmm. that tire blue moon and i feel like those were pushed really heavily too like if you went to a bar that was usually what was on draft you know what i mean mm-hmm Definitely, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like like Kolsch, a lot of Kolsch's too. I think. I mean, yeah, I but definitely, yeah. yeah, Blue Moon was definitely on rotation there. 
Yeah. I mean, like, what, what do you think was the first thing that you tried? First, you were like, like beer, beer? No, like the first thing you tried that wasn't like, you know, Budweiser or Miller or something like this. That yeah, you're like, probably, huh. probably Stella. Yeah, I think so. Stella for, for sure. I think so. Stella's a good one. Stella's a very Stella, good one. Stella is a good one, man. Shout out to Stella. Yeah. Straight up. Like, if you're going to buy something that's at every grocery store, buy Stella. Like, <laughs> probably, yeah. you know. Surprisingly, uh, Coronas are one of my go-to too, but without the lime, like it's a great ooh, without the lime. It's without a the great, lime, the great Pilsner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is true. Yeah. What's a uh, Joe? What's your take on Modelo? I heard recently that Modelo is the most popular beer in America right now. I like Modelo a lot. I really do. I think yeah. a lot of the Mexican beers are just kind of ways. They're kind of a step up beyond what. Budweiser and Bud Light or Millers or Coolers, they just have they're brewed better. Hmm. Can you t- can you tell the difference? Like when you have one of these, like you know, huge big beer brands, and like tell which ones are better just off the taste. Yeah, to... I mean, you could pretty much tell Bud Light or Budweiser. Yeah, but I mean, like that... after brewing, like before and after brewing, I guess I should ask. Oh, before I started brewing, yeah. no, I couldn't. No, my palate was not there. I couldn't tell you. you know? mm-hmm. And me a random beer, I would have been like, I don't know, beer. <laughs> yeah, beer. yeah, love that. Uh, is there any um any styles that have like become super popular over the last couple of years? Like I don't know, for example, like probably these hazies or any of these seltzers or any of that kind of stuff. That's kind of like you thought about doing any kind of rotations with. Um, I do hazies. I do quite a bit of them uh, in the summer, and then I kind of lay off of them. Um, okay. There's only so much hops you can take. <laughs> but, uh, seltzers, I haven't done, done that, just because I know yeah. I won't do drink it. Yeah. There's not a lot of people around me that will drink it, so. It's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should have seltzers pretty hard on this show, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not, uh, you might catch, I don't know, Brittany was, was, uh, I think she's at her store, but she, uh, she might be the only one out of all of us that will, will have a seltzer on camera. <laughs> Maybe, but, uh, I don't know, man. Um, <clears throat> what do you think is like the worst, worst beer trend that's happened recently? Um, milkshake IPAs. Oh, probably. Goodness. Yeah. Um, I'm not a huge sour fan. I'm glad that kind of died down quite a bit. Mm-hmm. They're not bad. It's just uh, unless you want an esophagus at the end of the year, I would suggest not drinking <laughs> that. Ever. Yeah. Just yeah. To have, I mean, Heartburn City, if you like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, I was a, I'm not a fan of the, the slushy, uh, all the slushy beers, like the thick slushy stuff that people are doing oh yeah the fruited yeah kind of, yeah mo- yeah most like slushy sour type of deals but they're like chunky and i'm like dude I don't, if i wanted this i'd get something not a beer you know <laughs> but what's funny is you, you'll try them though i mean you try yeah. everything <laughs> yeah i'll try everything but i'm just <laughs> even like though you, even though you know it's gonna be bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> i tried this one uh me and adam were doing a show uh, one, six months ago probably it was like a purple, it was like grape slushy, like, I don't know, like what they call it, like grape slu- mosaic IPA or something. I was like, it was yeah. weird as fuck. The, the, main, the name didn't make any sense. And I was like, this is going to be awful. And Adam's like, yeah, cool. Try it. <laughs> and so I uh, poured out and it's just fucking thick. And <laughs> it was, dude, it took forever for me to finish it. It was so gross. But I mean, you might as well have a margarita at that point. You're kind of yeah, nice. it would have been better too. Margarita would have been better. Um, <laughs> speaking of better, what do you think? Um, what do you think are your top five, like, uh, influences as far as like what you'd want your beers to taste like? Oh, um, top three, whatever. Top, top few. <laughs> wow. Um. Well, in the Belgian beer category, I'd have to say um, 
you ever had lofendamon or uh, yes yes that was kind of like where i wanted my belgian beers to go in that direction that breweries direction um and then there was one locally bastones um mm -hmm. that kind of influenced me a lot and mm -hmm. then and there's another brewery uh close by loaded dice um brewer there is just kind of very experimental kind of just doesn't mm -hmm. give it doesn't care what anybody thinks it'll brew whatever and mm -hmm. uh he kind of got me out of a slump. I was like kind of kind of in a blue brewing slump mm. where I was really like enthralled with brewing anymore. He was just doing really wild things. And I was like, hey. Yeah. Did a few shows and kind of got me back into the swimming and brewing pretty heavily. Also, yeah, you gotta gotta get that motivation somehow. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so I've always been curious about this, but since you started home brewing, well, I guess. Now let's, let's let's fast forward. You're home brewing like five years or so, right? At that point, are you buying anything, any other like just beers out of the the store, or the beer store, or the you know the grocery or whatever? Or are you just making your own stuff and drinking that? Um, at that I, at that point, I was still buying from the store because my beers really weren't up to the par yet. Okay. And yeah, for the first three or four years, I was still doing that. Even into like the fifth or sixth year, I was kind of waning off because my beers are getting better. Okay. And then uh, I wasn't really competing heavily until like the fifth or sixth year. So nice. And that was maybe four competitions a year, where now I'm doing like maybe 15 to 20. Okay. Sometimes. Uh, that's a lot. So when, um, when you, when you started getting like, you know, I guess, past that point where you're like this stuff's getting pretty good and like do what what would bring you to the store to actually get something or try something you could word of mouth or like hey you need to find this and check it out yeah word of mouth or um i'll go to a brewery and really dig a beer that they have and i'll try to find it on the shelf which is most of the time i can't find that beer yeah yeah it's just a beer i don't want to have <laughs> <laughs> yeah because the distributor came in and pushed it down the store, but yeah, uh, seasonal beers for sure. Uh, okay. When Oktoberfest comes out, best beers go get a spot in Oktoberfest. Okay. Go look for local Oktoberfest and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Actually, speaking of, um, uh, shout out to it. There's a there's a local um, group that we we do stuff with pretty regularly called Sobros Network and me and Brittany were just on their Oktoberfest slash uh, fall beer tasting. So uh, I think it was live, but go and check out their website for that. If you want to see us try like 16 Oktoberfest beers in a row, <laughs> it was a nightmare. After a little bit of that Marzen is not that great, man. <laughs> it's like, it's, I got really bummed after a little bit. <laughs> You could go from four percent up to six point five, and you wouldn't. Even, that's the thing with those. So, Dude, <laughs> some of them, some of them were they were just bad, you know. Yeah, uh, like, some are sugar laden, some are just kind of bland. Yeah, kind of hard to get that in yeah. between. The ones, the ones that I found the worst were like the ones that tasted overly um, fake pumpkin. Like the the on the fall side, not like the Oktoberfest side, but like it was like a mix. It was like Oktoberfest beers and like fall beers or whatever. Oh, uh, okay. And you're uh, talking about like pumpkin ales, pumpkin ales, fucking dude. Ugh, oh, yeah, it was bad. Like the, um, I think it was like what is it, Kentucky, Kentucky bourbon, no. uh, pumpkin ale or something. <laughs> like it's something like that. Word sounds very familiar. Yeah, I was like, dude, <laughs> and like uh, our friend Stoney who runs Sobros was like, oh yeah, we'll try all these things, and he wouldn't tell us anything that was coming out of the bag. So we're just like, oh god, like me and Brittany are sitting there, just like trying them, and we're like, dude, this is so so bad. Like, <laughs> like the overly like like some of the some of the fake pumpkin taste was like almost tasted like plasticky, and I'm like, this is gnarly man like i can't with this shit it's like adding like fake smoke to barbecue stuff you know like, you can't you can't <laughs> untaste that you know no no 
we yeah. know it's fake. Yeah, like bro, this shit's fake. <laughs> uh, oh man, Adam, uh, you're you're in Atlanta. How how is uh any of the Oktoberfest stuff or fall beer stuff hit your local area yet? Yeah, there was like you know, yeah. I mean, it's big time. Every yeah. every weekend, it's like some something going on mm. at all the breweries here. Yeah, that's good yeah. to hear. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, <clears throat> man, what was I gonna? I was gonna ask you something about. I always forget this thing. Um, forget what it's called. But um, in Michigan, it's really bri- big. Where they there's like um, it's like a trail or not a trail, maybe a. What is it called? They have like, different breweries who have these like little pendants or whatever, and uh, you can collect them all. Like there's a, a shit ton of them in Michigan. Do you know about uh, this? Yeah, it's a hot passport, and then they have like the brew tag. Yeah. Brew tag. So. Brew tag. Yeah. Uh, nice. brew tag. So there's like there's only two or three of them with brew tags in Tennessee, and uh, where I'm at, <clears throat> and. They're pretty cool. I mean, so I think it's a pretty cool thing. Do you uh, do you do any of that kind of stuff out there? Do you collect any from the locals around town? I don't. That kind of took off, what, maybe four or five years ago. And my yeah. kind of, I'm a beer dork still, but like that part of the beer dork of me wasn't that dorky anymore. I didn't want like, no. <laughs> I, I have a hot pad for it. I just don't use it because I forget about it. Yeah. 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 I've noticed yeah. a lot of it's, there's no like, single one too like the, if you go to if you're in upstate new york or just around new york there's there like new york has its own app for um like a beer passport type of situation it's like uh say like called beers across new york or something i have it on here but yeah there's another one that just started up around here too i can't remember the name of it but there's there's a couple now there's a few of them yeah it's a the app is called New York craft, I think. If you're ever up, there, if anybody's ever up there and listening, um, go check that out. It's pretty cool. It'll show you all the map where you're gonna go. I assume that, yeah. Um, but Michigan's got a bunch of spots on that on the brew tag thing. So, yeah, there's a lot of breweries involved with that here. Yeah, quite a few of them. I mean, there's yeah. you can stumble and walk out the door and stumble in, into a brewery pretty much. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you, um speaking of actually have you so you've been um homebrewing for like 13 years uh, have you thought about making it like a brick and mortar or uh, yeah. getting... many of times i have many of times um i have a friend that we've he kind of got into brewing for me and then uh we've kind of been back and forth on a few times but it's it's always a matter of timing yeah i mean investors timing uh, what the market's looking like and the beer market's kind of like in a weird spot right now Mm. people are kind of going low alcohol or not drinking really that much anymore so yeah it's a very strange time to think about it Mm -hmm. i was gonna um the reason i brought it up because because of the amount of breweries in michigan i was wondering if that had deterred you at all like there's just so many of them no, no, just because the dream is too much to it clouds out all that kind of thing. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I like that. What um so if you did, um <clears throat> I assume I assume that you do it in Warren, right? Or would you try to do it in a, a different city? Probably a different city. Um <clears throat> the guy that was uh probably trying to partner up with he lives on the other side of the state, so it'd probably be somewhat center of the state maybe mm-hmm. way or my way it's more of like what that community has what kind of foot traffic nice yeah kind of interests interest there is in craft beer mm-hmm. speaking of tra- foot traffic i'm gonna walk my way over to this other beer that you sent over so this one break golden awesome can you can you check these uh, in on on taps and other stuff like that if they if people have your beers um that one no um no you can't but i've had a beer <laughs> on untapped from a from a competition and it was at a brewery and it was on untapped for a while oh nice all right cool so, so we're gonna go to this other one real quick okay. 
peel it off, so it's going to be a second. But um, this is the east side slide double, right? Yep. 5.6, 25 IBU, also very cool label. It's very, it kept them cold. So here's going to take a sec. So um, <clears throat> do you want to, what's, what's this beer all about, Joe? So that's actually a uh, collab recipe between me and another, I mean, two uh, homebrew clubs. And um, this one is from Dan Gakuk from Motor City Mashers. Me and him made a recipe together. Okay. And we both brewed it on our own systems. And this is my version of the Dubal oh. of that recipe. Oh, cool. Shout out. You said his name is Dan? Yep. Shout out, Dan. Let's pop this. Pop this jug off. Yeah, the Dubal is kind of one of my favorites. It's a. Uh, it's in between a, like a Belgian pale and a dark strong. Okay. Yeah. He has a pale, but it, it's kind of like a gateway into heavier Belgian beers. Yeah. I mean, it smells dark. It even smells darker than the other one. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. It smells darker, but yeah. it, there's a lot of darker malts in there, especially malts. There's mm -hmm. a lot of dark, dark fruit character. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like look, compared to the other one. There we go. I don't know if you back up. So you can't, you can probably see my hand through the other one, but not this one. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. This is legit too. This is really good, actually. Yeah, I thought it turned out pretty well. Yeah, it's not too heavy. It looks it looks heavier than it tastes by by far. But <clears throat> yeah, great color. That Adam, I don't know if you can. Uh, yeah, it looks fine. I get good light, but it's way more caramely looking than you can probably see on camera. But it smells great. Mm. How how old is this one? How long have you been brewing this one? Um, that one I think is now about three, two or three months old. Oh, nice. 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 A lot of people age their Belgians or bottle condition them. I just go from fermenter to keg um, because I know it'll be nice. reversely carbed and the, the flavor will stay the same. Yeah, it's really good. You think it's going to feel, I know I keep saying it, but you think like just by the look of something like this, you feel like it's going to make you feel heavier, but it doesn't. Yeah. It's like it, ta it tastes, it's like a, kind of like a light crisp on it. It's, it's really nice. Mm. That's really good. Yeah, it's really a pretty good. complex beer for what it is. It's pretty simple, but it's pretty complex at the same time. How long, so how long before, I mean, after you started brewing, did you try something like this? Like what, 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 what's like the starting point? And then like, what do you think is the most complex thing you've tried to do? Um, I think Belgians pretty much are kind of a complex thing because everybody has a very standpoint on how to make them. Hmm. Some people are in a camp to where they have to be completely traditional. And some people like me just kind of do whatever they feel is right to brew Belgian beer. But you kind of got to baby the yeast on the Belgian beer. It's kind of what makes a Belgian beer. Mm. And it's your kind of perception of how you want to do that. A lot of breweries in, uh, in Belgium kind of go no temp control and just let the yeast ride. Okay. Right. And then try to uh, control it all the way through and keep it super low and controlled. Oh, cool. Kind of get some <laughs> of the mold and the yeast character itself. Yeah. Yeah. It took a while for me to start getting into like really defining my recipes. Like I was kind of just willy nilly for a while. And then I kind of started to understand what certain malts did and hops and how they played together. Yeah. I don't want to pick, pick favors from your babies, but I like this one over the other one. Me too. Me too. So, okay. Favorite child right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit hmm. actually speaking of well, not speaking of but me and adam just did a, an episode recently where we built our ultimate music festival 
from the ground up. And we decided to pick Michigan um, as the spot. I want to know what you think about <laughs> this, okay? So we picked um, – where did we pick Adam? <laughs> <laughs> where did we pick? Where's the place? You that picked we it, really. I know I, I know I picked the place, but I'm like, where the fuck did we pick? Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, so we picked – Mackinac Island, all right, in late September, early October, as Ooh. the place. What do you think? You'd be bailing through a lot of fudgies, as they call them up there, because people <laughs> love to come there and get the fudge. Yeah. Dealing with a lot of families and strollers and people just mowing down fudge. And it, <laughs> that would be kind of surreal, because there might be some people that are yeah, fairly, fairly maybe intoxicated that would enjoy the the irony of a music festival and fudge people there at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the idea was I, I'd gone there in 20, I don't know, what some year, 2014, 2015 or something. And our friends took us around the thing, you know, you take bikes or whatever. And oh, the yeah. idea was <clears throat> you put stages up like at different points on the island so you'd have to bike around or whatever and there'd only be a certain amount of people because the fairies <laughs> can only bring a certain amount of people there <laughs> and uh the hotels like what their one hotel or two hotels there, completely reserved for the festival so people can stay there if they want but yeah oh, it's like yeah. a complete takeover of the whole place I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> do you think it'd be a good spot or no? <laughs> Those people would have a heart attack. So they would. Yeah, <laughs> that'd I mean... be a great place. Be a great place. Yeah, <laughs> if you could if you could secure the whole place down. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it'd be sick. You just have to warn the staff, right? It's gonna be wild. <laughs> they give free admission to all the staff. <laughs> They're used to family coming and eating fudge and taffy, and here comes a bunch of rowdy oh dude we, people, you know already all day in, yeah people in pasties and fishnets trying to listen to some <laughs> whatever <laughs> oh dude speaking of uh so it was up like i said earlier i was up in louisville at this festival this past weekend and man the youths the youths don't care man there's just people just out here you know what i'm saying like straight up just no, basically nothing on these places. And I'm just like, me and Adam have been to quite a few music festivals together. I don't think, I don't think they people understand, man. You're gonna get toasted out of one of these places, like so sunburned. Like they have <laughs> no idea what they got themselves into. But they're gonna have the coolest tan lines ever. So I'm so psyched for them. Shout out to all the youths. Anyways, um. That's a little weird tangent, but um, where where would you? So if if we didn't put our music festival in Michigan, where would you put one? Your your you like the your build your own music festival. Build my own music festival. It could be in Michigan. I like the kind of like island slash secluded spot idea. That's a great one. Mm. Um, that's a hard one, right? It has it took us one. a minute. For yeah. sure. We had a whole I'm, note. We're sharing ideas. There's some uh, there's some great ones in Michigan right now. So um. yeah. Oh fuck. Anyway, off that. Um if you were so we're talking about how you probably don't buy as many beers as you used to from the stores or whatever now. If yeah. you're gonna go buy if you were going to go buy five, like, you know, everyday drinkers type of beers, like for you, maybe for you or just for for a party or something, what do you think you'd buy now if they weren't your beers? Um, I'd, uh, I'd probably surprisingly buy like Corona or Modelo or something like that. Just something I know that's going to have the same flavor that I had previously. Mm hmm. Super yeah. de drinking crushers. No one <clears> thought about it. Because sometimes you just want to have a good beer. You just don't want to get crazy and yeah. you just want you can sip on and be completely fine with it. 
Yeah. The reason I ask is because um, I'm wondering what is the beer that if you're going to show somebody like your home brews, what is the the beer that you would show them? Like what, what style or what particular beer? Oh, probably. Uh, and they're not a beer drinker. Keep that in mind. Not, not a beer drinker. Like you're like, hey, I do this thing and I want to show you how cool I am at it. Like this is the one. Like, this is yeah, like, a, like a beer that's for everybody is what you're saying, Pat. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Would, it would probably be a Kolsch itself because it yeah. kind of has a little bit of fruitiness to it. There's some bitterness there, but it's very smooth drinking and you can kind of, it's a gateway. Mm. Like, hey, this doesn't have to taste like that. You can have a little bit of flavor there. Yeah, I think yeah. that's, I, I like the word gateway to it because, you know, we we're talking about the blue moons and the stellas of the world. Um I think that is that is a gateway. Like you, you kind of yeah. get in that little lane, and then you're like, "Shit, what what else is on this side of the grocery store?" Like, you know, like what's on this what's on this chunk of it? You know, let's try everything. But uh, man, there was a time I thought Blue Moon when I first had it tasted like blueberries, which I was totally way off on that. I just <laughs> saw the name and I was yeah. like, "It flavor that's weird." <laughs> I mean, what yeah. I'm doing here is some yeah. kind of flavor. There's um, there's a, a beer, a UFO blueberries, um, beer yeah. that legit tastes like blueberries, which is kind of crazy. There's also there's also a sweet water, a blueberry, oh, yeah. wheat, blueberry yeah. wheat. I don't know if they still make it, but it's at the brewery here in Atlanta. Sweet water. Mm -hmm. I think they do. I think they do. I've seen sweet yes. water. I don't know if it was the blueberry. Yeah. It's like sweet water blue, it, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. But it was like, it's one of those beers too. It's like you could find that easier than you could like their IPAs or, you know, yeah. Pilsners or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. It's all for people to start drinking IPAs off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. That That is it. You know, that's a thing that we've, we've talked about quite a bit on the show is like what IPAs got people into trying them because it is kind of like a harsh beer i guess to just push on somebody yeah and um so the beer i was telling you earlier before we started that we did a thing with lagunitas a while back and that was actually the beer that got drew into drinking ipas like the the lagunitas ipa that's a and good one. uh yeah yeah i think that's a solid one i <clears throat> i think you get that one you get uh probably but probably maybe a new Belgium or something is like a starter one. Uh, around, here, around here it was too hearted. So, oh, well, yeah. Kind of oh, like yeah, everyone in Michigan's indoctrination in the IPAs is a too hearted. Like, Dude, too hearted like is a gnarly one to start with. That's yeah, a, yeah. A, that's a great beer, though. <laughs> yeah. That's they one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, well, they, um, they the, the lighthearted version now, which is kind of mm. cool in the sense that you don't have to get wasted, and you can kind of taste the grain <laughs> build. So you kind of oh, okay. get, like, you get oh, like, nice. the, you see yeah. how great the beer is when you taste like the grain build. You're like, wow, that's actually awesome, even without the massive hops and alcohol. It tastes yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that something that you've kind of um, like grown to know over? Like after starting to homebrew and stuff, like you can kind of taste how things were brewed. Yeah, that... you kind of you kind of get a sense of what malts were used. Sometimes hops, even though it's harder now because there's so right. many different varieties, there's countless. I can't even name mm -hmm. thirty off the bat. Jeez, jeez. There was there was a point where Citro was like the newest hop, and that was like blow your mind. Everywhere. 10 new hops a year mm -hmm. keep what um if you're gonna pick something that uh you're excited about like brewing right now like what what kind of ingredients and stuff are you like this is the shit right now uh i think yeast are kind of like the ingredient now which uh, yeast is like an ingredient people kind of really don't talk about a lot mm -hmm. but it kind of makes the beer yeah, <laughs> and there's so many different um, labs that are messing around with yeast and 
making new strains and it's just kind of a weird time to be in beer because there's so many new yeast strains that can do so many different things. Mm. So usually if there's a new yeast, yeast that comes out, that's what I'm usually trying to get my hands on and try to brew with it. Oh, nice. Is there anything that you're like completely not trying to get your hands on? Like this is not for me. Uh, sours. Oh. <laughs> no, <not> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Do you just, you just not like them or are they hard to brew or like what's uh... I, like, I like them and some of them you have to it depends on what you're doing i mean there's there's ways to not infect your brewing gear but a lot of those sour beers can destroy your brew setup right. or any other beer you want to make they can just stick around and you'll never get rid of the yeast oh. without having to pretty much get rid of half your equipment that sounds awful i'm like nope Let's get, stay away from that. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, Adam. You got any 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 trends or anything that are happening in Atlanta that you've seen? Just, uh, like... just what you're saying that like the slushy beers. I don't understand that. Yeah. Right. Or the milkshakes. Like, I mean, the milkshakes kind of went away, but that was the thing for a while. Yeah. You know, especially in Louisiana, that was the thing. New Orleans and stuff. It's, like, it's yeah. such a crazy thing for Louisiana to have. <laughs> So no, it's hot. so hot, dude. <laughs> Some yeah. milkshake beers. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, thank but, you. Yeah. I'm, no, that's I'm not. That. Do it. I'm surprised they want that route down there. I haven't been there in quite a yeah. while. About ten years, but. Yeah. Well, there's like a couple of like cool breweries in New Orleans that are trying different things, like you know, more fruited, like um, farm help, farm house elves and stuff like that. Or like fruited IPAs, like hazies for the most part. But yeah, every once in a while they'll throw in like a chocolatey, like weird experimental, like cereal IPA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> way, it's way too yeah. hot. <laughs> I, I did some of those for a while. I was kind of on a kick with those. I did like three or four of those with cereal. Oh, okay, nice. I mean, they can be good, but yeah, just yeah, I'm always afraid to try it. Yeah, it's definitely a. I mean, it's, it was kind of, it's not really a running joke, but it's like, yeah, you should probably be near like a, a bathroom. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Uh, so there's lack of beer. Especially with my stomach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, what, uh, Joe, what cereals did you use for this, for the ones you brewed? I did a uh, sweet stout with Count Chocula, which actually okay. was one of my favorite. Okay. Did uh, the Fruit Loop. Which everybody has done the Fruit Loop beer, I think. Mm. Um, I did Frosted Mini Wheats, and I think there was one more I did. Maybe Frankenberry. Ooh, Frankenberry. Okay. What uh, what's your take on all these lactose beers that were kind of popping for a minute? Um, a lot of them are just kind of were over the top, so I didn't really dig them as much. I I did a few myself, but. Never really liked them. Yeah, Intense. I think they're really they're, they're <clears throat> all the ones we've tried. Do what? They seem very very artificial because usually people just overdo it to the max, so you can really that's all you taste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's all the ones we've tried. I think on this show are just they're really hit or miss. Like it's either they're really good or they're like man, never again. <laughs> oh man pretty much nailed <laughs> uh is there any is there any places like when you started home brewing did, i know michigan has a ton of brewers but um are there any places that you've like visited to try to collaborate with anybody or want to go and collaborate with anybody well i've done that i've, I've won a competition and uh brew my beer on a local brewery Cadillac Straits and then mm-hmm. um recently I won a Siciliano's Cup which is a market on Grand Rapids mm-hmm. and uh the prize was to brew with a brewery which is um brewing with Mint Brewery my beer to guard sometime coming up in the next few months but oh dope nice I've That's... never personally went to a brewer and been like can I brew a beer with you because most of the time they're just so busy that it's kind of a near impossibility yeah, you're winning a competition. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I, I always I always wonder about collaborations because I'll, there's quite a few breweries in Nashville now that um are pretty I guess well known ish, but um occasionally you'll see like they'll do collaborations, especially around like I don't know big beer festival times. You'll see them right afterwards, like oh like this this person you know in collaboration with whatever whatever on the cans or bottles or whatever it may be. And I'm like, I wonder how these, besides like beer festivals and people meeting each other, I always wonder like, how did, how is this happening? You know, like, because everyone does seem super busy when you go to a brewery, you know? Yeah, they are. For breweries though, it's kind of, it seems like it's not really tight knit, but it, everybody knows everybody. Mm-hmm. Once you start getting, even like being a home brewer for a long time, you pretty much know a lot of brewers, you know, tons of professional brewers home brewers they know you by name basis so when they do like a collab it's pretty much just a time to hang out and drink beers with your buddies i mean mm-hmm. that's more or less <laughs> what a collab brew is most of the time <laughs> yeah i figured <laughs> man um do you have um you want to say anything else about this east side before i pretty much finish it oh no no i'm good oh, cool cool it's very good um very very good i'm so excited there's another one honestly (laughs) it's like i was thinking about giving one to Brittany to do on our uh, review shows but it's like i don't know i don't know i have to i have to keep these (laughs) yeah i was gonna i was gonna tell you to save me one but you know that's not gonna happen so well well, i mean if you come here soon enough then (laughs) you can have one i'm gonna step Mm -hmm. i'm just like I'll just can like draw one for you like this much. Like this you have yeah. a sip. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> All right, cool. So I think I think we should do one last thing to try to maybe cap off this. Like what would be what would be your your dream collaboration or and or dream thing to win as far as brewing? Uh, dream, thing, dream thing would probably be Homer of the Year for Nationals, and then uh, probably um, for a brewery it might be. Man, there's so many people I want to brew with. It'd be a hard one. yeah, it'd be a hard one. Um, what about um, maybe not Rocky and Van Meter? He was a part of that brewery I talked about, uh, Bass Stones. Mm-hmm. Kind of much. He was pretty much like my idol when I was starting off Belgians, just because he brews alone, and he doesn't allow anybody in his brewery when he's brewing, or in his fermentation space. Pretty much. Okay. That's kind of been the way I brew. I don't really collab or have people over for brew day. I kind of just do my own thing. Yeah. So I always thought that was kind of cool, and I like to invade his space, just make him feel uncomfortable. <laughs> we uh. Actually, it's kind of crazy. I think we were, <clears throat> that's very similar to this, this dude me and Drew met a while back, this dude named uh, Nagareshi. And he's like a brewer that was out of California, but I don't know where, where he's at now. But um, he, dude, he was telling us some crazy stuff like brewing on solar power in like the jungle and shit and like we're like what is this dude about he's like a g like some kind of scientist type of guy you know and uh he was that same same type of dude like he'd just like do his thing and they're like here is magic you know they hand it to you (laughs) and uh yeah yeah it's a dude dude's a psycho yeah check him out actually if you go find him on instagram he's still on instagram no, just, yeah, yeah Nago Reshi. Weirdo. Super cool though. Anyways, <clears throat> Joe, I really appreciate you sending us these beers to try on the show. And um yeah, I want to you have you should plug all your places where people can see all your all your beers and all your socials and all that stuff so we can keep up with you and the the rest of the community can check you out when they're in you know the area yeah yeah maybe i'll just send you guys some beer kind of off the cuff Ooh, what a surprise beers no no yeah. show involved you can just have some free homebrew <laughs> oh shit 
<laughs> love love a surprise. Yeah, that's the that's the best. You know, and you get like a, you know, that, that, honestly, that's the best thing in life. Just like a surprise treat. You know, you weren't expecting. Yeah, it's the best yeah. thing ever. You know? I do it. With, I do it with a few other home brewers. Like you've been doing it back and forth for quite a bit, so you get little nice packages on your porch, some free beer. That's the coolest shit ever. That's Usually, so if they're nice. Friday, they show up. It's always a good weekend. She got me excited just like just now. You're like I mean, like you know, how, like you can have you feel the excitement in your chest even though nothing's happened. Like I'm just like oh, a little treat. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, anyways, Joe. Um, yeah, go follow Joe <clears throat> Jean Baptiste Brewing on Instagram and on and you have you have a threads, but I, I don't know if you do you do anything on it. I haven't really toyed around with it yet, but. Yeah, I mean, Twitter is ine- inevitably going to go down. So, <laughs> yeah, <they will>. <laughs> especially <laughs> with this everybody paying to use it now, eventually. <laughs> um, yeah, so go and check it out. Uh, Jean Baptiste Brewing, uh, we follow them. So just look at uh, the people we follow and uh, yeah, follow them, check them out. Check, you know, check Joe out. Uh, he's constantly winning things, being rad. Really appreciate you sending this stuff through. In, no uh, problem. No problem. Yeah. So your boys, Adam and Pat, go and follow uh, all the quick sixer stuff. And if you like this, you got any other brewery suggestions we should reach out to, check it out, you know, let us know. But it's been your boys. We out of here.